In today's new video, we're going to be talking about and addressing the question as to whether all bulging and herniated discs cause pain. Hey, how's it going everybody? Remy Sovereign here from RemySovereign.com. With today's new video, what I want to address and talk about is the topic of disc bulges and disc herniations and their relation to causing pain or not causing pain in certain cases. So it's been previously determined in many research studies and in with regards to the literature that not every disc bulge or disc herniation causes pain. And it's a bit of a mystery as to why this may happen and occur as why some people may not experience pain with the disc herniation or disc bulge and others may experience severe pain. So to break things down guys, firstly I just have this review of literature kind of study here indicating individuals with disc bulges and disc herniations that were asymptomatic. So these were previous studies that were just kind of taken together and grouped together on individuals just having an MRI done on their spine. And these individuals were asymptomatic with regards to having no back pain, but they had disc bulges and disc herniations. So to break things down with regards to a lot of the previous literature that they looked at. So with regards to 20 year old individuals, 55 people had disc bulges and this is done. This was taken within four studies, previous studies. With regards to these 55 people, all of them were asymptomatic, even though they had a disc bulge. 101 people at age 30 with disc bulges, this is in seven previous studies taken together, were asymptomatic. But if we look to disc protrusions now, which is a contained herniation, 87 people in their 20s, this is in five previous studies, did, were asymptomatic, did not have pain. 468 people in their 30s with disc protrusions, this is in 14 studies combined, were asymptomatic and did not cause pain. Now out of the total amount, it's not indicated here, but just wanna kinda of give you an indication guys, these are people with disc bulges and disc protrusions or contained herniation, and they did not have pain and were asymptomatic. Now that's important to kind of emphasize here, these people had disc bulges and disc herniations and were asymptomatic. Now the big question is to why would these people be in asymptomatic? Now there's a lot of factors at play when it comes to a disc bulge or herniated disc. And the factors at play could be the location of the, the disc herniation or disc bulge, the severity of it, how big is it, how small is it. And also we could look to kind of genetics, the amount of pain receptors located on the annulus, the amount of inflammatory markers that may be accumulated, maybe IL-6, tumor necrosis factor, the amount of those molecules being accumulated and having some sort of inflammatory response. But also we could look to maybe how well an individual can kind of clear maybe those inflammatory markers as well. Maybe the amount of blood vessels in the region or the amount of nutrients that are delivered there. And this could also be influenced by an individual's maybe diet or sleep as well. And all those factors kind of taken into account will may, may determine if an individual may experience pain or may not experience pain with regards to a disc bulge and disc herniation. It's kind of a mystery as to why some of these individuals do and do not. And so we could also look at, is it impinging on a nerve root? Is it not impinging on a nerve root? There's all these factors at play. And the important thing to kind of consider here, guys, is that not every disc bulge or disc herniation may cause pain. And that there's a lot of factors at play for that specific reason. Now I'm gonna kind of touch on my case here for a second. And so I'm having an MRI done next week, next Monday night. And now I know I've made a recovery. I'm pain-free with regards to my disc protrusion, but I personally don't believe my disc has fully healed. I just believe it's healed to the point where it's pain-free. So it's just maybe kind of regressed to a certain point where I don't have, where, I, where that pain has been eliminated, but I do not think it actually has fully healed, but we will find out after I have that MRI and we'll see kind of the differences with when I do a comparison and I'll post a video. But with all that guys, I just wanted to kind of touch on that. I wanted to talk about this because not every disc bulge or disc protrusion or herniated disc causes pain, whereas others may cause severe pain. So you, someone may have a large disc herniation where someone may have a small disc herniation, but depending on the location or depending on the genetics and whatnot, that individual with a smaller disc herniation may have more pain than the person with a larger disc herniation. And that's kind of just a bit of a mystery as to why, but I've kind of explained some of those factors, the location, the severity, pain receptors located in the region, inflammatory markers being accumulated, and then also an individual's maybe nutrition, sleep can also affect that as well. So with that being said, guys, just wanted to make this kind of video to kind of address that because not every person's case may be, may have pain or experience pain, whereas others may experience very severe pain. And to wrap kind of all this up is that every case is different. And when you're kind of comparing cases, it's really hard to compare because not everyone's gonna be the same. And there's obviously a lot of factors that play that a lot of, with regards to researchers or scientists may not fully understand. So 
Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Just wanted to explain that, that not, not every disc bulge or disc herniation causes pain. And there's every, there's a bunch of differences that may exist and a lot of factors at play with regards to that. So now what I'll do is I'll post kind of a link to this research article below and I'll post other research articles below in the description if you guys would like to check these articles out uh, just for your kind of own interest and for your own education. I believe it's important to understand if you're someone that's looking to maybe overcome disc herniation, disc bulge, the more you can kind of educate yourself, the better off you will be in terms of potentially making a recovery is the more you know and the more kind of factors at play or that you know are at play and the better you can understand things, the better you can kind of develop your own rehab and recovery plan. Okay guys, now if you're someone that has a bulging or herniated disc as previously indicated by an MRI that you had and you're asymptomatic or you have no back pain or no issues, I'd love to hear your story and your thoughts with regards to finding that out. But also if this is your first time learning about bulging and herniated discs, not all causing pain, I'd also love to hear your thoughts regarding that. And that's it for today's video guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this and I wish you guys all the best and a successful and productive day. And take care and until next time.